There's a big gap between academia and policy. There's many academics out there working in this field who, you know, they're doing research, they have different projects, they have different ideas, they have different policy proposals, but there's no way of sort of bringing them together. It's just somebody has to sort of take a kind of leadership role to make this happen, it seems to me, and I think that's exactly the sort of thing that the Pearson Institute could do. At the time of the English Civil War, uh, a philosopher, Thomas Hobbes, wrote a famous book called Leviathan about why there was so much conflict in English society and how did you solve all that conflict. And he said, you know, the, the reason there's so much conflict is the absence of legitimate state authority and governance in society. So I think if you looked around the world today, if you thought about all the conflicts we've seen, that's all to do with that. It's all to do with failures of legitimate authority and governance. There's sort of three big claims that Hobbes made, and all three of them are contestable, and all three of them we'd like to research. One is, you know, what's the right model of human beings? You know, are we, he emphasized very much materialistic incentives for conflict. But I think we understand that human beings are much more complicated than just, you know, have, having material interests. People care about ideas, you know, they have ideologies. So the first thing to do is to think in a much broader way about human motivation and what types of motivations or ideas lead to conflict and violence. The second element of Hobbes's book, which I think is very relevant for the agenda of the Pearson Institute, is that uh, he recognised there were different ways in which states formed. But he said it doesn't really matter what, what you know, it doesn't really matter. Sort of states do what states do. They have a sort of DNA and the, the, they just resolve conflicts and this state of anarchy or war, as he called it. But I think we know that's not true. We know that states are capable of creating war and conflict, not just stopping it. So that's something we need to think about and research and understand. What's the objectives of states? How are states formed? How are there different paths to effective states? What is the path to an effective, legitimate state? And how do we control states? And how do we get states to work in the interests of the citizens and not to unleash repression and violence? The third thing that Hobbes thought, which I think is also a very important point for the Pearson Institute, is people would just be in favour of having a state because the, the life without a state was so awful, anarchic, it would be natural that people would want to have a state. But I think we see that's not true either. The state is Janus-faced. You know, the state can do great things, it can provide services, it can protect you, it can provide health care or education or build roads, but it can victimise you, it can spy on you, it can collect information, it can throw you in prison. If you look around the world in developing countries, you see places where people run from the state all the time. And I'd like to think of those three areas as being the basis for the research agenda at the Pearson Institute. And, and if we study these problems, the nature of human motivation, the nature of the state, how the state interacts with society, I think that's, that's, that's a good place to really begin to develop a deeper and kind of deeper and more eclectic way of thinking about conflict and the resolution of conflict. <laughs>